Hi and Assalamualaikum. My name is Sayyara Nazifa binti Wamar Izal. So today I'm going to present to you about the shoulder, PA oblique or scapula Y. So moving to our first slide is the anatomy of the scapula Y. And these are all the anatomies that should be included in the radiograph of the scapula Y. So moving next is the projection. So the reason why I put PA oblique picture and AP oblique picture side by side is easy for you to compare. So for PA oblique, the collimation included are the true lateral scapula with a superimposed lateral and vertebral scapula border. So since the lateral and vertebral scapula border is superimposed and it is in true lateral. Then the proximal humerus should be included with the scapulohumeral joint. But for AP oblique, it increased the magnification of the scapula and the humerus. So moving next is the position. So this is the criteria for the correct position of the scapula Y or PA oblique shoulder. So firstly is the humeral head superimposed over the base of the Y. So this is the Y. The humeral head is superimposed with the base of the Y. The acromion and coracoid processes should appear near as symmetric upper limbs of Y. So this is the acromion and this is the coracoid. So it appear near as symmetric with the limbs of Y. The thin body of the scapula should be seen on end without rib superimposition. So this is the body of the scapula and it is seen without any rib superimposition. The superior scapula angle and clavicle demonstrated on the same transverse plane. So this is the clavicle and this is the superior scapula angle and it is demonstrated on the same transverse plane. So for the next position, okay, how to differentiate between the vertebral border and the lateral border. So for the lateral border, it is quite thick. It demonstrates a true particle outline which is approximately 0 0.6 centimeter or 0 0.25 inch but for the vertebral border it only appears a thin line so there is possibility for patient's position to be excessive obliquity or insufficient obliquity so for excessive obliquity the criteria is the lateral border is superimposed the thorax. So this is the lateral border. It superimposes the thorax or position closer to the thorax than the vertebral border. So to correct it, decrease the obliquity. But for insufficient obliquity, the vertebral border superimposed the thorax or demonstrated closer to the thorax than the lateral border. So this is the vertebral border and this is the thick border, the lateral border. So to correct it, increase the obliquity. So for the next position is leaning toward the IR. There is possibility for the patients to lean toward or lean away from the IR. So the criteria is the clavicle demonstrated inferior to the superior scapula border. So this is the clavicle and this is the superior scapula border. S superior scapula angle. So in this radiograph, the superior scapula angle is demonstrated superior to the mid clavicle. And the scapula is foreshortened. So as we can see here, the scapula seems smaller than it should be. So for the patient leaning away from the IR, the, IR, the clavicle seems superior to the superior scapula angle. 
So this is the mid clavicle and this is the superior scapula angle. So the mid clavicle is demonstrated superior to the superior scapula angle or the superior scapula angle is demonstrated inferior to the mid clavicle. So to correct this, we need to straighten up the MCP and align it until it is parallel to the IR. So this is the image that I am going to evaluate. So the image for this radiograph is the, the position is correct because the superior scapular angle and clavicle is demonstrated on the same transverse plane. So this is the superior scapular angle and this is the clavicle. So it is on the same transverse plane and the thin body of the scapula should be seen on and without rib superimposition. So this is a scapula body and this is the ribs. So there is no superimposition occurs. So for alignment, the alignment between the collimation and cassette is can't be determined because there is no evidence of collimation because there is no four border of collimation. But for the alignment of patient and cassette is incorrect because the distance between the central structure to the edges of the film on the superior inferior right and left border is not equal distance and the alignment between the collimation and cassette is can be determined because there is no evidence of collimation because there is no four border of collimation so the centering point for this radiograph is can be determined because there is no evidence of four border of collimation and the standard centering point here should be at the scapulohumeral joint here. So moving next for collimation, the red box represent the superior border, while the yellow one represent the lateral border and the green one represent the inferior border. So at the superior border, structures that should be included are clavicle. This is the clavicle the superior scapula angle and the acromion process but for lateral border structures that should be included are the scapula body the glenoid cavity and the humeral head but for the inferior border structures that should be included are the a part of proximal humerus and the thorax so there is no evidence of radiation protection apparatus seen in the radiograph. So for exposure factor, for the thin structure, we use the acromion, which is here. And for the thick structure, we use the coracoid or the glenoid fossa. We can choose either one, but I use the coracoid, which is here. So for the KVP use, for penetration and radiographic contrast is adequate because the bony cortical outline of the thin structure which is the acromion can be seen and the bony cortical outline of the thick structure which is the coracoid also can be seen but for the MAS use for detail and density is inadequate because the only trabecular pattern of the thin structure, which is the acromion, cannot be seen, and the bony trabecular pattern for the thick structure, which is the coracoid, also cannot be seen. So the actions need to be taken is the MAS must be increased by double. So moving next is the marker. So there is evidence of an anatomical lead marker shown in the radiograph here. It is correctly placed on the right superior side of the body and it is placed appropriately without superimposing any region of the interest. Moving next is the aesthetic value. The film size used is 24 times 30 cm, which is sufficient to demonstrate all structures of interest and there is no evidence of artifact on the radiograph. 
Moving next is the name and identification. The patient's name, ID, date of examination, place of examination are not visualized on the radiograph. It can be visualized on the right superior border or at the right um, lateral border without superimposing any region of the interest. So for the conclusion here, the radiograph is unacceptable because there is no evidence of the patient's name, ID, date, and place of examination, and there is evidence of incorrect exposure. So the radio, the examination need to be repeated. So these are the reference that I use. So for information according to the PA oblique or scapula y shoulder you guys can go check it out all of these things that i already attached the books so thank you for lending your ears and have a good day